The following is a conversation with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 6th of July, 1976, in Washington, D.C. discuss uh, about the uh, manifestation of uh, matter mm. from uh, Pradhana. Mm. Now, uh, Lord Kapiladev describes that uh, from uh, Pradhana is the undifferentiated sum total of all material elements. Mm. Mm. Then uh, from Pradhan, by the action of time, it's a mahatattva mm. is generated. Mm. Now we are a little uh, confused about uh, said uh, by the impregnation with the Lord's internal potency, there is a hiran maya. Mm. It's produced within uh, a mahatattva, mm. and it's a hiran maya is a self effulgent. Mm. It's effulgent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Now. Our uh, point is, whether this Hiran Maya uh, and the Mahatattva, the relationship between these two mm. and Pradhana, how does that uh, relate to each other? Very, it's not very clear in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm. You are not very clear at this point. It said uh, from Pradhana, by the impregnation with the Lord's internal potency, mm -hmm. the hidden Maya is produced. Mm -hmm. That's actually the beginning of the uh, injection of jivas mm -hmm. within the, this uh, material mode. Yeah, it is a little complicated. So, it is not clear on this world now. It is a little difficult to, uh, to understand mm -hmm. the uh, phenomenal uh, descriptions. In the Chaitanya Chaitamita, the Karana Tattva, mm. you can read it. He gets some clue. We also get some clue from uh, Paskanda, from Bhagavatam, uh, in the Purusha incarnations. Mm. Probably explains about yeah. uh, Mahatattva. Yeah. But there's a difference between. Uh, uh, now, uh, our understanding is this, that Pradhana, both Pradhana and Mahatadva, they are eternal, mm. though they are ma material manifestations. Everything is eternal. Mm. No, eternal in the sense that uh, it's different from Prakriti. Mm. Now, Prakriti is the when it is completely manifested. Prakriti is Pradhan, Purush, these things are a little complicated. Mm. But we wanted to clarify this because this is the uh, this is the nice thing that uh, we can show that matter comes from light. I mean, this is the this is the uh, source. Yeah. Sai Kata, Sai by the glance of uh, Mahavishnu, he called Narayana Asit. In the beginning, Narayana said there was no Lord Shiva, Lord Naila, Brahma. This mantra was there. So originally, by the glance, by the glance of the Vishnu, yeah, we can prove it that how, by the sun side, mm. everything is great. How it is? Your molecule and so on, so on. Yeah. You can describe. Actually, from the sun side, mm -hmm. the trees are growing, leaves are coming. Mm -hmm. As soon as there is no sun side, immediately mm -hmm. they fall down the leaves and the tree becomes without any leaf. How this happens? 
the same process. The sun shines and produces so many things. Simply by the glance of the Supreme, the material nature becomes agitated and the three gunas become manifest. In this way, these are described there. The same process. How from the sun side the leaves are coming out, what are the molecular changes, if you can study the same process. I do want to read this here in Maya. The relationship between the Mahatabdva and the here in Maya is clear. Then I think rest are, uh, we can have some idea. So we are a little uh, confused in this, uh, this very point that uh, it is also said, Pratana is the, the 24 elements that doesn't uh, contain time. But Pratana is the ingredient. Yes, it is the sum total of the unmanifested material elements. Mm. Now, from Pradhana, actually, Mahatadva is manifested. In Mahatadva, there is a basic difference that uh, there are some uh, already some manifestations in Mahatadva categories. Mm-hmm. There is already some man- manifestations. Total material energy, Mahatadva. Is that differentiated? Mm-hmm. Mahatadva is differentiated. The, the, the different yeah. categories? No, the time element is there in Mahatadva. Mm-hmm. So it is already 25 elements here, including mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, at, at, this, at this stage also, uh, the impregnation of the lowest internal importance means that the zebras are already impregnated here mm-hmm. from uh, Pradhana. Mm-hmm. So here, the living entities are in a pure uh, goodness. Mm-hmm. Living entities are all living entities. This material mm-hmm. covering is uh, this power separated. The living entities can be free from material cover at any moment. Just like water and oil is always separate, does not mix. The Vedi mantra also says, Asangayam to Purusha. Actually it is not mixed, but it is covered. Hmm. That's how I can be taken out at any point. Simply like this about it. Sagurāra samadhita yitāna brahma bhūyāra. I think the first canto is that description which I can understand is there. No, in the past canto in the Sri Bhāgavatam, they are also, it's, uh, it's not very clear. Then second canto, the development of Sisti Tattva. There you get. Actually, it is also referenced uh, in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. It's uh, here in Maya. It's, uh, sometimes it's also called uh, uh, Brahman. Mm. Brahman. Brahman, yeah. yeah. And uh, he is called Hirana Gorbha. Brahma. Hirana Gorbha. It is also said uh, in this uh, state, Pradhana state, the cause and effect are not clearly manifested. Chaitanya, Chaitanya, did you refer? Nitananda Pastor. No, that I haven't studied it. Did it? You get clue there. Maybe in the third chapter, chapter where it's content, Nitananda Pastor. The glories of the Lord Nityananda. Mm-hmm. Well, around. That should be it. It's a shit. Fifth chapter? Mm. Yeah. This chapter is simply devoted to describing the essential nature and the glories of Sri Dan Prabhu. Lord Sri Krishna is the absolute personality of Godhead, and his first expansion in the form of pastimes is Sri Balaram. Mm. Beyond the limitation of this material world is the spiritual sky, Prabhyom which has many special planets, the supreme of which is called Krishna Loka. Krishna Loka, the abode of Krishna, has three divisions, which are known as Dwarka, Mathura, and Gokula. In that abode, the personality of Godhead expands himself into four planetary portions, Krishna, Balaram, Pradumna, the transcendental Cupid, and Aniruddha. They are known as the original quadruple forms. In Krishna Loka is a transcendental place known as Sweetadeep or Vrindavan, 
Below Krishna Loka in the spiritual sky are the Vaikuntha planets. On this Vaikuntha planet, a four-handed Narayan, expanded from the first quadruple manifestation, is present. The personality of Godhead known as Sri Balaram in Krishna Loka is the original Sankarsan, attracting deity. And from this Sankarsan expands another Sankarsan called Maha Sankarsan, who resides in one of the Vaikuntha planets. By his internal potency, Maha Sankarsan maintains the transcendental existence of all the planets in the spiritual sky, where all the living beings are eternally liberated souls. The influence of the material energy is conspicuous here by its absence. On those planets, the second quadruple manifestation is present. Outside of the Vaikuntha planets is the impersonal manifestation of Sri Krishna, which is known as the Brahmaloka. On the other side of the Brahmaloka is the spiritual Karana Samudra, Karana Samudra or Causal Ocean. The material energy exists on the other side of the Causal Ocean without testing it. And the Causal Ocean is Mahavishnu, the original Purusha expansion from Sankarsan. This Mahavishnu places his glance over the material energy and by a reflection of his transcendental body, he amalgamates himself within the material elements. As the source of the material elements, the material energy is known as Pradhan. Mm. And as the source of the manifestations of the material energy, it is known as Maya. But material nature is inert in that she has no independent power to do anything. She is empowered to make the cosmic manifestation by the glance of Mahavishnu. Therefore, the material energy is not the original cause of the material manifestation. Rather, the transcendental gla- glance of Mahavishnu over material nature produces that cosmic manifestation. We try to understand this, you. Material energy has no power to create. It is this glance that makes material energy energy thing. So you read that chapter carefully. It said in the Mahatva, when the lower glances are impregnates, where is it glancing? That is spiritual. Yes, it's still spiritual. That glancing is spiritual. Yes. So matter itself cannot do anything. Ajagalastan, they will do. Ajagalastan. The nipples in the throat or neck. Mm. Uh, there are some nipples. The nipple gives you a That may give you the So nature is creating. They, generally they say by nature. But it has got no power. It is matter. When there is glass of Sankarsa or Vishnu, that is it. That state, uh, when a living entity is impregnated in this state, uh, it is also said that there, it is in the pure goodness. Pure goodness always. It is simply covered. Mm. This is not completely manifested yet. But then it says, by the contamination of pure goodness by Anka, mm. then it starts material ego. Yeah. From there everything is going to manifest. Yeah. So once we come, we come to material ego, then it seems uh, clear. That is, that is explained in Bhagavad Gita. Purusha Prakitis Topi. How does the uh, contaminated ego or uh, contaminated consciousness differ from uh, false ego? Hmm? That is contaminated ego, false ego. But uh, we have a uh, subdivision in, uh, in uh, Tarkanta for internal subtle senses. They said uh, mind, intelligence, ego, and the contaminated consciousness. Mm. And uh, this this ego is false ego, mm. and the other division is contaminated consciousness. I don't know. It is false ego. I have 
this matter and this body. This is possible. Yeah, but why it is a point? Ego is there, but this is also. Mm. Then, then by association with the modes, there is contamination. This is also developed. Mm. But still, in this uh, verse on uh, 726 verse 14, it says there are four internal subtle senses. Now, these four senses are mind, intelligence, ego, and the contaminated consciousness. There is... Uh, the internal subtle senses are experienced as having four aspects in the shape of mind, intelligence, ego, and contaminated consciousness. Distinctions between them can be made only by different functions, since they represent different characteristics. Bhūte Pratitijāna Gunā the same thing. Purusha Pratitijāna Bhūte Pratitijāna Gunā Is this ego mentioned here? Is it a false ego? That's what I understand. But yes. Mm. Real ego is an inferior Tarkusha. Aham Brahma. So, so, so um, is there a false ego in different mode, like false ego in the mode of ignorance, false in the mode of passion or goodness? Yeah. <clears throat> so that consciousness can be contaminated according to the mode yeah. in which it is associated. So yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I am identifying with my body in any mode, that is false ego. Yeah. But my consciousness is contaminated by a particular mode, maybe passion, maybe ignorance. Maybe goodness. So then my consciousness is contaminated. So false ego is the base of all material activities, but I may be acting in a certain mode, contaminated in a certain way. Is that right? Yeah. Is everything clear? Is uh, for uh, internal subtle centers? Yeah. Actually, consciousness is a symptom of life. So when we say contaminated consciousness, means the quality of life is there. Mm. But somehow that uh, that is mixed to yeah. material. Right. Yeah. Originally it is goodness, very pure goodness you say. Originally in the beginning yeah, of I give the example just like water falling from the sky. Mm. It is crystal clear, mm. distilled water. But as soon as it touches the earth it becomes muddy. Mm. But that muddiness can be filtered. Mm. Plus Muddiness is the character of the mud, yeah. not the consciousness. Yeah. And it can be cleansed, filtered out. Less filtering process is devotion. Mm. So unless the water is different from the precipitated matter, mm. how it can be filtered? Mm. So far we are concerned prakriti is clear, but the, <laughs> the source of prakriti is a little... Uh, so I'm trying to. Hmm. If we want to show this probably in our chapter on uh, some sort of creation, okay. creation of uh, our material manifestation. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's what I want. To I will get this in from second kind. That's the first step in self-realization chapter. Fifth 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 is matter uh, generated within a given body, like the body of a given mm-hmm. being, while it's living, is matter generated and annihilated within that body during the time of life? Body is matter. Whole body is combination of matter. Right. Mm-hmm. Does the living entity within, or the soul, yes, within. Yes. Does, it, does it generate matter, so say the body could get heavier or lighter? Because, yeah, because the living entity is there, matter is generated. 
Yes, because some there's like a tree, the living entity is there. A big log old is generous. Mm. Like that stone. Huh? Like yeah. that stone. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. That that stone is increasing its weight. Mm-hmm. So you, when someone goes to see the stone, he sees oh the stone is bigger and heavier also. Mm-hmm. So that increased material or matter that makes up the bigger the bigger size of the stone is that matter being generated from the soul? Yeah. From the spirit soul. So spirit soul has power. Similarly, from the spirit soul, everything has come out. Hmm. So spirit soul can create matter. Actually, from light matter is generated. Yeah. Not from matter light is generated. Hmm. That is all. There were some people who had done measurements and... Uh... Measurement is there. Hmm. In the very detailed Upanishad Pura. Is it that the living entity, when he creates this matter to expand like the stone is growing, hmm. does he manufacture this material from a, the etheric platform or does he simply, to his desire, he... simply by desire? Hmm. Uh, it's mm. Yes, there have been some sci- modern scientists have done some experiments mm. showing that in the soil there are organisms, microorganisms, and earthworms that can produce chemicals. Increasing yeah. just simply by their presence. I have given that example. He has mentioned. Limon. Lemon tree. Lemon tree. Lemon tree is producing chemicals. Some people would say that the lemon tree was simply taking food and rearranging it to produce yeah. these lemon trees. The tree, the tree is the source, but everything is there in the earth. But God's creation is so nice that through this tree the chemical is coming. The chemical is there in the earth. Mm. But the seed of the lemon tree, when grow, it extracts the particular type of chemical. We were wondering then if also it could produce a matter instead of taking from the earth and rearranging it. The earth is the source of everything. Oh. Sarva Dugha Mahi, Sarva Kama Dugha Mahi. You get from, actually you are getting all chemicals from the earth. So they are already there. Yeah. Created by Krishna. Yeah. yeah. This is that way. He's trying to, to mention an experiment in science. There's a man called That Oscar. is your duty. Uh, but he tries to show that uh, in a living but system. You know, we can see practically. Different seeds are exactly different color, different flavor, different chemical. Mm-hmm. Everything is coming from the Sarvabhugha, Sarvokama Bhugha. Everything is coming. So the plant, the plant simply mm-hmm. outside arrangement, how to take it. Mm-hmm. So in other words, the tree or the plant in agriculture takes the chemicals from the soil and the seed, mm-hmm. seed. As soon as come in touch with the heart, mm. the seed exacts particular right. chemicals and everything from there. Right. Is that. So that that spirit soul in the seed, he is not creating not anything. Spirit soul. No, he's taking. Uh, spirit soul, according to his karma, takes shelter of the situation. Right. But the seed the chemical composition mm-hmm. exacts mm-hmm. the desire. So all Krishna's arrangement. Yes. So in other words... It is instrumental. Mm-hmm. Uh, this way you have to do something. You require an instrument. Actually, according to the desire of the living entity, he is given an instrument. Brahman Sarvabhutani, Jantra Rurahima. But Jantra. You require something, you require a particular jantra or machine. 
The seed is practically the seed. Mm. Yes. And the living entity is using it to satisfy it to that. So that growth of matter, that's, uh, the matter is coming from outside and the spirit soul simply taking it and yes. expanding his body. Is earth still is earth still being manifested from ether like the description in the Bhagavatam is from sound and then uh, two different elements finally yeah, come to yeah. earth. Is that still happening today? Everything is all is happening. Like they just rise by them. So the spirit the spirit soul is in the seed, and the seed interacts with the other chemicals to make growth. Mm. So, if the chemicals are not there in the earth, then the seed cannot make it, make those. No, the chemical is there in the earth. According to the seed, it is exempt. Within the earth, everything is there. The seed is the instrument, and the um, living entity is the exactor. Or what is that? Exactor? Yeah. Executor. He takes, utilizes. Utilizes. Uh, Boom the Extracts. 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 Now, suppose like now, it's like this Vedic injunction against artificial fertilizers in the soil. Suppose, as modern farmers are doing, they use this artificial fertilizer and the soil becomes uh, depleted. In that means that because of the same principle, mm-hmm. you are living entity. Right. By artificial fertilizer, you are exacting something from the earth, the same food. Mm-hmm. Now, suppose we take so many chemicals from the earth and then they become a little depleted. Can those chemicals be replaced by the earth itself as the ongoing process of nature? Mm-hmm. Everything is coming from the earth. Mm-hmm. All the living conditions are there in the matter. Mm-hmm. Provided there is living in me. That's like a dead body. It is not that the living condition is failing. No. The living condition is there. That particular soul has left that body. But the dead body is also full of ingredients of living condition. So many germs are coming out when the body is decomposed. We say decomposition, but even in that decomposed condition there is living. So the living conditions are already there. Matter is any form. Now the decomposed body, the living being has left. It is now it is dead man, but still the living beings are coming. How it is? That means matter has always the potential to give shelter to the living being. So it is impossible that there is no living being in the Bhagavad in Bhoga. We cannot accept any condition that is promised and permission. You see actually in the earth, in the air, in the water, in the fire, the high element, whatever you take, these five elements in different proportions. So the living, just like from perspiration, living entity itself. It, it, it is impossible that there is no living entity, there is bogus, complete. You can challenge them. The living entity is that they are familiar with. That is another thing. Kupa Mandurna again. They know some certain type of living entity, that's all. So they think that all the living entities would be like that. And that is a group of older man, Dr. Prabh. But the fact is, any condition of material existence, there is possibility of living entities. Yeah. Sarvaga, Sanu, Acharvayamu, Sarvaga. Everywhere there is living entity. It is impossible to control. Then on that planet there is no living entity. Is that one? No, to show that matter is generated by life, what do you do some experiment? Is, uh, every day we are experiencing. 